Good Namis. Feels good to be doing some actual scouting, not just following. For as long as I remember, the dead, dead horses have thought that places of the old world were taboo. Doesn't look so spooky. To me. Whoa! Here we go! Never stood a chance, did they? Never stood a chance, did they?
So I finally get to explore all those taboo places without the other scouts yelling at me? Can't wait. Whoa! Here we go! Well, that's that then.
like the shadow of a ghost. The spitter plants and the green monster men aren't native to Zion. Wonder where they came from. There can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and give away all their money just to watch someone flip paper squares on a table. Never stood a chance, did they? What can I tell you? Let me tell you a story. When I was a boy, a man came through the valley with one of the caravans. Tall man, big mustache, carried a guitar. I asked what he did for his living, and the interpreter told me he was a singer. What is that? I asked. The man explained that he went from place to place and sang for people who gave him food and shelter and care in return. I couldn't believe that there was a place in this world where a man could do that. I promised myself then that one day I'd explore that world myself. I, um, I haven't told him yet. Never had the growins. You'd do that? Sure. Sounds smart to me. He might not get so mad at you. Go with fortune, friend.
The Narrows up ahead. That's the Sorrows territory. They're peaceful enough, but you don't want to make them mad. You are the one Joshua Graham sent to us. Blessings of the Father in the cave on you. Daniel is waiting for you. A sorrow's Yaogwai fist is a sacred symbol. It shows that we belong to the tribe and have willingly undertaken a dangerous quest to aid the tribe. Each sorrow makes his own. And only after hunting and slaying a Yaogwai that threatened our people, our shaman, White Bird, oversees the rites. Perhaps if you spoke to him, he would allow you to undertake such a quest. Waking Cloud is my name. I am midwife to the Sorrows. It sounds ill omen, no? Midwife to Sorrows? The children and the old have already been evacuated from the camp. They are safe enough, unless the White Legs come for us in force. I tend to other hurts and sicknesses that afflict our tribe. I also scout the valley for the herbs I use in my medicines. What would you speak of? Daniel is a wise man and a great friend to the Sorrows. He taught me to speak the language of New Canaan, the English from the Holy Books. Yes. The language of the New Canaanites is the holy tongue, for it is the language their sacred books are written in. The father in the caves brought it to them after the judgment, but the ancestors of the sorrows sinned against him. They were denied the true tongue. Six years. He attended the birth of my third child. It was a hard birth. The river nearly carried my water to the father and my child's with it. Daniel knew the ways of New Canaan's medicine. He stepped in and saved both of our lives. After the birth, I asked Daniel if he would teach me what he knew of childbirth. He agreed, and so here I am. What would you speak of? Have you not heard of the god of the New Canaanites? He is our protector and our judge. He helped our ancestors find their place here in Zion. He gave us many gifts, but we are not to seek him out. His caves are forbidden to us. Those who seek them out are taken from us. Perhaps you do not fully understand the new Canaanites. I have seen the father's images. His holy bride and holy son were given unto the world to save it. They dwelt in the caverns of the mountains, caverns which can still be seen today. The people sinned against him and were punished with the end that came in fire and the loss of the holy tongue. What? Only the new what, bro? Canaanites were spared. Right yeah, I'm making a video. Oh, all right. Show me it later. I'm sure Daniel could tell you more. His knowledge of the Father is greater than my own. Then I will look forward to our next speaking. Welcome back. What can I do for you? I thought he might. It's been some time since I've visited civilized places. I don't have fond memories of them. But I have always seen these places from the outside. I'd rather not influence him more than I already do. Why don't you talk to him?
Whatever you tell him, I'm sure it will be fine. It's still his choice to make. I just want him to make it without looking to me for approval. He's a man. He can make his own decisions. God be with you. What can I tell you? Yeah? What did he say? He said that? Well, I guess you have been out there more recently than he has. So, what's your advice? I see. Well, thanks for your telling. I'd like a minute alone to think about this. Thank me. There can't really be a place where people go into big buildings and... The dead horse has told me details about the attack on your caravan. A stranger's sympathy might not count for much, but for what it's worth, I'm sorry. The Sorrows will mourn your friends too. They mourn everyone, even the White Legs. They have sensitive souls. Innocent, if there is such a thing. In spite of what's happened, I hope that Joshua and I can help you out of here. But to be frank, we need your help, too. Well, I'll be. I was starting to lose hope we'd be able to get any of this, much less all of it. Tribals are smart, but, well, they're ignorant. <sighs> Letting go of a taboo is difficult for them. So I knew it would have to be one of us. Turns out all it took was a Gentile, or, uh, no offense. These supplies are a godsend. But if we're going to evacuate Zion without drawing more white leg attention, I need you to go back into the valley. Specifically, I need you to scout out some locations for white legs and try to recover a map of Grand Staircase, a wilderness area to the east. There's also the matter of the roads. We're going to be heading out of the east side of the park, but I'm not sure the way is clear. I appreciate the enthusiasm. There aren't a lot of people in the wasteland with kindness to spare for anyone who isn't kin. Since you've been poking around the valley, you might see more activity from the White Legs. One of the Sorrow's hunters, Waking Cloud, has volunteered to help guide you through the valley. She has a special talent for staying out of sight. After this, it's just a matter of getting everyone out of here safe and sound. And hopefully, you can head back to the Mojave without any more trouble. Well, here we part ways. I'm needed back at the Dead Horses camp. Maybe I'll see you there sometime. Sorry. Joshua was pretty clear. Get you to Daniel, then come on home. You can take it up with him if you'd like. I will. Good gunnen, Akis. I'm glad to see you're still with us. How can I help you?
father in the... Oh, right. He's some spirit the Sorrows used to believe in. Watched over them from the caves in the valley. They marked some of the caves around here because they think they'll be punished for going inside. I think as more of them learn the teachings of the new Canaanites, they'll lose their old superstitions. Oh? Oh. <sighs> of course. How stupid of me. They probably also think Mary is the mother and Jesus is the child. No wonder they picked up on things so easily. I guess it just goes to show how difficult it is to communicate sometimes. Grand Staircase is farther east, deeper into the Colorado Plateau. The White Legs were able to reach us here, but it's only because Zion is close to the Long 15. They can't pursue us east of here. It's too wild. Throughout our history, we have called many places Zion. This valley is full of God's beauty, but it's just a place. Zion is more than this. We cannot use any and all means available just to protect stone and water and a piece of sky. We have to hold on to our faith. Far more enduring. If we sacrifice grace for a piece of land, we may live in this valley, but we will no longer dwell in Zion. It's better for us to leave now. If you could part with it, healing powder would be welcome. We have enough stim packs for now, but we can't rely on that small supply. Brock and Xander plants can be found throughout the valley, and you might even find some on white legs you come across. I used to help the Sorrows with various medical problems and general issues they were having, but my bishop sent me here as a missionary. We new Canaanites believe that there is a path to salvation for everyone, and it's important that we set people on that path if they are willing. I'm trying to make amends for allowing our problem to become their problem. The new Canaanites, I mean. The White Legs have always fought with us. And with Joshua returning, Caesar has motivated the White Legs to stamp out the new Canaanites entirely. That means the tribes we work with, too. It's already hap... I just want to prevent something terrible from happening to the Sorrows. Yes. But not just White Legs. Raiders, too. Prospectors. Slavers. Anyone who thinks they can exploit the ignorant and the innocent. We lost the Tar Walkers and the Crazy Horns. We did our best, but we made mistakes. We paid for them, but they paid more. I'd like to get out from under that debt someday. Until then, it's enough to stop ourselves from getting deeper in the hole. To remove the sorrows from harm's way. I have to give credit to the White Legs for finding their way here. Though I imagine many died in the process. But they can't follow us east. Not into the Grand Staircase. They don't know how to live off the land. We head there. We can find some safety. Of course. There's an old saying that goes, If you want peace, get ready for war. You've got me figured half right. I'll shoot dead any white leg that tries to creep into this camp. But it's only to protect the sorrows. The Lord helps those who help themselves. But the Sorrows don't know how. Joshua and I do. Since I got them into this mess, I need to get them out. There is an important difference between killing and defense and waging war. Even a Gentile like you should know that. Joshua is a living Bible of all mankind's miseries of war. The debt he has levied through his actions, he repays every day. He is a monument both to God's unending forgiveness and to humanity's unfathomable capacity for cruelty. It's written on every inch of his body. When you look at him, 
Do you only see a man of God? Beneath those bandages, he is burned flesh. As he burns, so does he consume everyone around him. Joshua wants to fight because the white legs have stoked the naked flame inside of him. You, you see the light, but do not yet feel the heat. I can pray that you never will, but it isn't up to me, and it isn't up to God. It's up to Joshua. They're hateful savages who live only to plunder and destroy. Their leader is a devil called Salt Upon Wounds. War is all he knows. Everything he has, everything that tribe has, was taken by force, raiding, and scavenging. It's said there's no man deadlier at close range, that that power fist of his has smashed a hundred skulls. Maybe that's true, but so what? It's a low form of leadership. A tribe that knows only war has no future. And so he'll lead them to Caesar. Until then. Daniel said that I was to travel with you until you have completed your scouting. Is this pleasing to you? Certainly. We should make haste then. Well, everybody, there seems to be a problem with Joshua Graham. Yay. All right. Uh, really? <sighs> well, the only thing I can do now is quit the game. We'll be back.